So hi everyone, this is Becky. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. So this is only episode two. So we are just going to get things started. And if you like the content that I'm making on this channel, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and you turn on the notifications so that you know when I have a new video out. Also, if you visit the community tab, that is where I have all the updates going on with the channel. Like what are we filming next? So let's jump right into it. So today we will be discussing attachment styles. So a lot of people want to know what's the point, right? So why should I know about my attachment style? What's the importance of that? So a lot of research has been put into it. And if you understand and know your attachment style, then you're going to be able to kind of navigate your relationships a little bit better, know more about your own self in the process. And it just helps you understand why you have a specific attachment style. So before we start, I attached a quiz that you can take to determine your attachment style. So what I want all of you to do is hit the link and then you are going to start to take the quiz. So once you take that quiz, it will give you your result. Let me know what attachment style did you get? So when I took the quiz, I got a secure attachment style. Everybody's going to get something different. So share with me and let me know what you ended up getting. So knowing your attachment style is going to help you with things like your self-esteem. So when you find out your attachment style, if you think you're worthy enough, um, whether you value yourself, all those questions do get answered. Another thing that attachment style can tell you is your ability to control your emotions. So how do you behave in certain situations if you're pressed with a problem or you're trying to navigate a certain problem that arises, whether that's a relationship, your friendships at work. These are all things that attachment styles, knowing your specific attachment style can help you with. So also knowing your attachment style will help you learn how you behave in a relationship. So that's really important. So in a romantic relationship, it's a team. Essentially it's two people and your attachment styles can be different. How do you navigate it? How do you navigate all of that? And do you, if you see patterns reoccurring over and over again, in every single relationship that you're in, then your attachment style will give you an inclination of why, what's going on, why, why do I see a pattern here, and can I fix it? Something you need to realize is that your attachment style isn't something that you just fix overnight. There, it is a process, and depending on what you score, I'll tell you later on towards the end of the video. Well, how do I go about? changing it or how do I fix it? So a question that a lot of people wonder before we go into the four different attachment styles is how is an attachment style developed? So we have these formative years between ages three to 10 years old and your primary caregivers is the answer. So when we wanna say, hey, this person probably has this attachment style. If you look back at how they were treated between those three to 10 year old formative years by their caregivers? Were you neglected? If you were abandoned, maybe you were loved, right? So all of those are going to have an impact on the type of attachment style you have. But besides that, when you're in your adolescence, when you're in your adulthood and you're dealing with relationships, you're navigating them, what happened to you, your life experiences also determine your attachment style. So does your personality. We all have different types of personalities, your temperament, so temperament, personality, life experiences, something that researchers have looked into time and time again is that early experience with your caregivers. So that's a huge indicator of what's going to end up being your attachment style. It's not the sole indicator, it's one of the primary indicators. So I just wanna make that clear. Yes, your experience with your caregiver plays a factor. So if you're a child of divorced parents, all of these will impact your specific attachments. Let's say I had to psychoanalyze myself. I would say that, hey, maybe I have a secure attachment since that's what I scored. This is due to my upbringing, right? Everyone's upbringing is different. My parents have been married for over 30 something years and I always uh, felt the love growing up, my sister and I, my older sister. So that's something that I can say caregivers do play a role in that sense of my type of upbringing. Right now we're gonna use something called Becky infographics. So I drew these myself. I'm not the world's best artist, but we're going to go through the attachment style based on the Becky infographic. 
So we are starting off with secure attachment. So this one right here, you can see secure attachment. So someone who's securely attached, so this is what I scored. So someone who is securely attached, you're not going to worry. See, they're pretty happy too. So you're not going to worry about someone abandoning you. You're not going to have this fear that someone's going to leave you. You can be vulnerable. And you also have the idea that, yes, I can be with a partner, but also have my own independence. So I am with somebody, but then I have my hobbies. I have my friend group. All of that creates a very secure attachment style. So once again, this is the secure attachment style. So I don't worry about someone getting close to me. I can be open and I can be vulnerable. And I don't worry about abandonment. If it happens, it happens. Because I wasn't abandoned in childhood. So I don't have abandonment issues. And I like the aspect too of being secure in that, yes, you need your partner, but you're also able to be independent. In my life, I feel that's very true. I stick to that. I'm single now, but when I've been in relationships, uh, I do my own thing. Yes, I need somebody, but at the same time, I'm very independent as well. And I go about my day doing my own thing. And the other part of that too is you know, how you behave in a relationship. And I would say I'm normally very loyal and it's a team. I realize that I'm in a team with somebody and I'm a big communicator. <laughs> Anyone who knows me, I love to talk. So I think, you know, sitting down, being able to talk to somebody, whether it's on the phone, in person to person, I'm big on communication. As adults, right, we have to have this ability to communicate, even if Right, life is not unicorns and roses every day when you're in a relationship, but the ability to, to sit down and be able to talk about something as tough as it may be, right? Fights happen and, and conflict resolution is a big thing too, right? How are you able to handle a conflict and how do you resolve it? How do you go about talking about it and, and solving it? Using myself as an example, I always express my feelings and uh, my opinions. That's the thing, I'm, I'm a very kind person, but at the same time, I have to tell it like it is. I've always been that person. Like what you see from me is what you get. I've always been able to express my feelings, my opinions with whoever I'm with. So I feel like that's something very important. That you don't run away when things get tough. You try to, you try to, you know, you try to stick it out and, and uh, communicate. Communication is such a big key. Next attachment style that we are, that we have coming up in the Becky graphics is the anxious attachment style. So right here. And you can have a mixture, a little bit of, of each. So when you take the quiz, you'll see they do a breakdown of like what percentage is like secure, what percentage is everything else. So the largest part of your percentage that you get is normally your attachment style. So the next one is anxious attachment. Anxious attachment individual is the one that wants to be emotionally close. But they're like, you know what? People abandon me. So they fear rejection and abandonment. So these are the ones that fear rejection and abandonment. The, the anxious attachment is kind of like that ambivalent person. They want that closeness, they crave it, but at the same time, they are fear of the, they have this fear of the abandonment. So this is your anxious attachment style. The third attachment style is the avoidant attachment. So this is the Becky graphics, Becky infographics, and you can see this is your avoidant attachment. So this is a type of person, I call them the stage five denier. So this is your stage five denier. So uh, attachment issues, I don't have any. That's what the avoidant person says. They're like, me, attachment issues? I don't have any. So in this situation, the avoidant, just like the name recalls here, the avoidant feels that being close to somebody is foreign. It's a mysterious thing to them. They don't know what that even looks like if it was thrown right in their face. They never learned how to deal with conflict. The way that they cope with their emotional problems is with reason and logic. So they would say, this didn't work out. Well, then it's not on me. This person did that. I call them the stage five deniers because they say me attachment issues. I don't have any. So we're going to take a look again at the Becky infographic, the avoidant attachment. So our very last attachment style is going to be the disordered attachment. 
So that's the new term for it. Many of you probably knew it as the anxious avoidant or fearful avoidant, but the new terminology nowadays is called disorganized attachment. This is the trauma that they've been through. This is one of the hardest attachment styles to break free from. So what do we mean by disorganized attachment? So they do not feel good about themselves, so they will tend to project that negative self-image onto others. The next thing about the disorganized attachment is they love to play the push and pull game, also known as the cat and mouse game. So one minute they'll pull you in, the next minute they're pushing you away, then they're like, wait, let me pull you back in. So that's one of the things that happens in a disorganized attachment style. Negative sense of self, this uh, push and pull game, hot and cold, whatever you want to call it. They ended up with this type of attachment style because remember, it goes back to the caregivers in those early days that um, in childhood, those formative years. So their caregivers were unresponsive. Their caregivers were even abusive at times. So neglected them a lot or had somebody else take care of them. So they did not have that kind of love or bond that you're supposed to develop with their early caregivers. So there was some neglect going on. The disorganized attachment is also known for their sporadic behavior. Uh, their behaviors tend to be in 500 different places at once. So they're very sporadic and it's unpredictable. And it's hard for them to even categorize. This organized attachment style person is called the trauma. Dealing with the worst trauma. Like I said before, the most difficult one to, to deal with as an individual would be your disorganized attachment style. I know I, I've dealt with a few of those types, the disorganized attachment styles. They're probably watching this YouTube video today, who knows? But um, there's no hope for them, you guys, at all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so there is hope, even for those people with a disorganized attachment style, it's just gonna be much harder for them. They're gonna have to put a lot of work, time, effort into themselves. Uh, so yeah. Important part of this to understand also is everyone's life experience is different. And that's what makes us unique, right? As individuals, as human beings, what we've gone through as people in our lives. Like my life experience is completely different. Like I said, my parents have been um, married for over 30 something years. I've seen that relationship and how amazing it can be uh, with somebody like my parents, like two people coming together, working as a team, going through life. Right? But that's my life experience. And I don't expect somebody else to, to, to have that same life experience as I have, right? Maybe their parents went through a divorce, whatever the case may be. They have to come to this understanding as well that your attachment style may not be similar to your partner's. And again, it's those life experiences. What have we gone through, right? All of us have a journey, have a path, have these things we've gone through and it's made us stronger individuals at the same time, but it's different. It's different too. So you got to understand too where somebody's coming from. And I've even done it with those people I have noticed that have a disorganized attachment style. I, in the back of my mind there, I'm always like, okay, well, I, I kind of can understand why they were this way toward me or why they have this outlook on life. So it's coming from a place of understanding that I think helps you um, not worry. That's what I'm saying. Like secure people, like if you, if the person ends up leaving or whatever, and you know you've tried everything, communication, all of that, then you're like, okay, I can understand it now. I can look back and there, look at their life experience and say, okay, maybe this is this is what happened and I can come from a place of understanding. Maybe not a place of forgiveness, but a place of understanding. But you found out your attachment style. I know mine, right? So how do we fix it? How do we go about and fix it? So this is something I don't like to call it, right? So how do I fix myself? Because sometimes it's not necessarily that you have to fix yourself per se, but you have to recognize, right? If these things become a pattern, let's say every relationship is ending the same way, whether that's relationships at work, romantic relationships, relationships with family members. So you have to look at all of those different aspects, but if it's a reoccurring pattern, it's like, okay, what do I have to do now? How do I go about changing maybe behavior? So I don't like to call it fix it per se. Um, but how do I go about changing my patterns or behaviors? And it's never too late, right? To improve yourself or change a behavior. Behaviors can change and it, and it goes back, like we said, caregivers. How did your caregivers treat you? Adolescence, what happened to you then in adulthood, life experience. Because sometimes let's say you had an amazing childhood and then adolescence and adulthood, you are faced with people abandoning you. 
constantly, that would also have an impact on your attachments. First step is self-awareness. So this goes a long way. Let's say you've noticed these patterns keep happening where relationships keep ending in the same exact pattern. And you're like, okay, maybe I'm disorganized or I'm avoidant, right? And I'm no you're noticing it. It's like you take a pause there and you're like, wait, what's going on here? It's not that everybody's abandoning me too. It's like, what do I have to do within myself to start changing those patterns, right? How do I handle conflicts? Like I have to look at the whole scope of it. Look at like how you were brought up, like your, your caregivers and how did they treat you and think about, okay, that may have an impact. Also, how do I handle conflicts and is there a better way for me to handle an argument or when I'm involved in a conflict? Next, you're gonna challenge negative thoughts. So some of these attachment styles, you have a negative self-worth and you have to learn how to change that, turn it into positive. Don't say everybody hates me, they're abandoning me. You can change that into, well, why do I feel abandoned? And I am loved, I am worthy. So if I know that, then why am I feeling abandoned? Start to mirror healthy behaviors. Instead of getting upset and storming away, try to try to resolve a conflict. Again, it doesn't have to be only a romantic relationship, but other relationships in your life as well. Another step, something else that can help is to communicate with family members. So family members know you the best and they'll be able to give you some insight. So let's say you're ready to become self-aware and acknowledge maybe some faults that you have or how you handle conflict. You can talk to a family member, a trusted family member that would be like, hey, you know what? I think you do avoid relationships or um, you probably are disorganized attachment style. So family members is another, someone that you trust that you can talk to, whether it's a family member or a friend, a trusted friend, you can do that as well. You're not going to go and say, hey mom, today I watched Becky's YouTube video and she said that you're the cause of all my attachment issues because it stemmed from childhood. No, we're not gonna enter into a World War III. What you're going to do is you're gonna ask that family member for feedback, say, you know, maybe, so if you did, like, even if you went through a divorce growing up, you can say, look, you know, mom, I remember the divorce when I was younger. And I think it's led me to this type of attachment style. Like, have you noticed it or have I discussed it with you before in my past relationship? So that's the way we're talking about it. So I hope this video was helpful for everyone trying to determine their attachment style. So in the comments below, you're going to tell me what did you score on the quiz? I already told you my results, I got secure. We can put percentages depending how they broke it down. I will leave mine in the comments of what I ended up scoring. And you guys let me know, what are your thoughts on your attachment style? How do you think your attachment style was formed? So let me know, what do you think? Was it your caregiver life experience you went through? So that's it for today. Attachment styles are so important because it helps us examine ourselves and realize, okay, what type of attachment style do I have? How do I go about change, seeing some change in my behaviors or patterns? And then also helps us understand those individuals that may be avoidant or overly anxious or even disorganized. We can come to a place of understanding and say, okay, understand now a little bit more why they are the way they are.